The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 1st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. And if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put a radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every single ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside. Dow's up 205, 610, 7 tenths for the S&P or 31 points. 1% 1 for the NASDAQ 100, 141 points there. Um, just one point for the Russell. So it's basically flat, but 36 points, 1 and 1 tenth percent move for the semis. Trend is up 8 tenths, 114 points. You've got gold trading out at 1995. That's basically flat. Silver's flat at 2297. Lights recruit up a buck 70. 8270 is the print there. Natural gas down a nickel at 351. And the 30 year treasury printed out at 11020. That's up one point and six ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you got train technologies, eight, not a 19 point move, nearly 10%. Argenix is up 19 bucks, a 4% move, 12% for Assurant Inc. That's an 18 point move there. Martin Marietta up 18. Saya, the freight company, up $16. To the downside, it's Paycom Software, $92, bucks, 37%. Holy shnikes. Estee Lauder, down $22, bucks, or 17%. Humanoff, $22, bucks, 4%. Idex Laboratories, 5% or $19, bucks, and Paylocity is Locity to the downside. 9% move, 15 buckaroonies there. But let's begin here. Let's take a look at the uh, daily equity future contract. So let's go take a look at that. And actually, I need to fire up the um, TAS Market Breath uh, tool out there so we can see where we're at there. Maybe I do have that up and running. Let's see. Do I? Oh, I do. Okay, good. So let's start over here. We take a look at the ES Mini upper left-hand side. We know, well, really, uh, three of the four have bottoming patterns. Russell 2000 equity future contract does not, but the IWM yesterday did confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. You don't need to have all three of them, meaning the future contract, the ETF, and the cash indices. It's nice when they do, but you don't necessarily have to have each of them identify a bottom. But back to the ES Mini price right now, trading into a potential resistance zone. That's at the 4244 level. That is the center of its profile. We're just one point above that. If we can clear that area, we could uh, see a move up to the 43. 17 range. If we take a look at the NQ, both the ES and the NQ are now above their red oscillator and change line. That's important. It's going to be important at day Zen, not necessarily at 1110. We know we've got Powell coming out at uh, 2 o'clock today, but at day Zen, if price can remain above those red oscillator and change line, that will be at least short term bullish. Now, in the case of the NQ, Price should go target the 14, 838, 14, 938 level. In the case of the Dow, it may be the first one up to real resistance, which would be the top of its daily profile, and that's at 33,444. In the case of the Russell 2000, its price target to the upside would be 170,690. Now, question that came in 
from Mr. Bill. He was asking about the seasonality and have we hit bottom. Now, I'm going to change screens because sometimes when I do that on my screen over here, it uh, tends to go bonkers. Why does it go bonkers? Great question. I don't know. I just know that it does, so I try to avoid that. So in avoiding that, let's do this here. So, uh, you know, before I do that, before I pull up the seasonality chart, let's just also understand where we're at with regard to market breadth. Let's take a look at a couple of other tools out here. And this showing us our market breadth for the NASDAQ 100. Still in just bullish zone for the 60-minute time frame. The 240-minute, it's got 13 above and 45 below. Boy, that is not really a great situation out here. It says uh, if there's any kind of rug pull, man, it's going to be to the downside. And the same thing with the S&P 500. It still is very negative, 86 above. 216 below for its four hour time frame. Forget about the daily and the weekly as we speak right now, but the 60 minute charts are still bullish with regard to market breadth, meaning more instruments trading above profile than below profile for that specific time frame. What else do we have out here? Well, we've got that spot volatility index. Let's take a look at that. We are trading below the 50 day exponential moving average. That's not what I wanted. It was this tab right here. And if at day's end, price can close below that, that being 1758 as we speak right now, that would be bullish for the S&P. 500 it suggested a further rally again with that 4317 ish area being its price target to the upside if we look at the new york stock exchange it's advanced decline oscillator it closed above zero yesterday if it closed above zero again today it tells us that buyers are the ones that are in control and that's got much room much further room to run to the upside before it gets into over bought territory that requires a reading of about plus 150 out there so market conditions right now are certainly bullish we just don't have the market breadth to support what it is that's going on inside the market okay so we know that now let's go take a look at mr bill's question is have we hit the bottom I don't know if you really meant the bottom, but your question said, have we hit the bottom out here? So let's go take a look at uh, some seasonality. And if we take a look at the seasonality, it really depends on what we look at, Mr. Bill. So this chart here that you and I are looking at right now is the seasonality pattern over a 95-year period that takes a look at pre-election years. Why? Because we're in a pre-election year. So this says, no, we have not hit bottom. And this says that we just have a counter trend move. Now, to go ahead and take a look at how the S&P 500 has related to each of these highs and lows inside of the seasonality chart, we can flip over to an actual chart. And so here is what has been going on. In the case of the, top, the high that came in, it came in on February 2nd versus February 16th, seasonally, from a seasonal standpoint. The bottom that came in was right on time, March 13th. Then if we take a look at the next high that forms out here was on July 27th versus July 21st. The next seasonal bottom was on 818 versus 89. The next seasonal top came in at 91 versus 918. The next uh, seasonal top came in at uh, on the 1018 versus 1023. And then we have our next low that's out here and that was from uh, a few days ago October the 27th versus October 18th. Now, the next seasonal high back in that chart that we were looking at, Mr. Bill, would come in between November 6th and November 13th. So we can see here these 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 are coming in. So that was later. That high was later. This high was earlier. This high was earlier. This bottom was later. So we don't use them for an exactness out here. But the question is, is the high in? We don't know the answer to that just yet. Now, when we come back from this break, we'll take a look at the seasonality chart. And we can change the seasonality chart so we're not looking at pre-election years. We'll just look at the 95-year cycle and see what it says. Steve Rhodes with TFM. Please come back and join Mr. Bill and I as we look at that seasonality chart for the S&P 500. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're taking the seasonality charts for the S&P 500. And there is this other possibility out there. Let's say that the um, S&P 500 really isn't paying attention to the uh, pre-election year cycle chart out there. And then that, if that's the case, uh, Mr. Bill, you know that we're always looking for a bottom to form sometime in October. And that most certainly came to fruition out here. Now, the typical bottom on a seasonal basis would come in right around the October 26th uh, time frame. It turns out that on October 27th was when we got those TD9 count patterns out there for the um, uh, for the ES mini. Uh, so that's really right on schedule. If that's the case, then we could see the market rally into the end of the year. That's what this uh, chart here is uh, showing us. Now, it does show that we would get some type of short-term top in around the um, maybe late next week, the early following week out there. Then it moved down into the um, right around Thanksgiving, where we then go ahead and take off, in essence, to the upside, so to speak. So this is a possibility. Which pattern is the uh, market going to follow i don't know the answer to that question i wish that i did but we certainly uh can follow along by paying attention to what's going on inside of the equity future contracts how they deal with resistance levels how they deal with support levels on a uh, pullback out there and again right now as we take a look at the uh, daily equity future charts uh there's a, you can see how this 42 44 level has acted as a short-term resistance point inside the es mini again you want to see close above those red oscillator and change lines out there to again assist us with the idea that at least a further counter trend rally should unfold out there so again if that's the case we're looking for at least a short-term top i'd say maybe a week from today right around the november or maybe it could be by friday quite frankly, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, early next week, um, I know based upon that seasonality for the uh, for the uh, uh, pre-election year cycle out there. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that that provided you with that, in the, in the answer that you were looking for there. Let's get to some of the requests that have come in. The first one coming in from Alton, and Alton is in um, 
Citicorp. Uh, C is the uh, ticker symbol out there. And Alton's asking, should he add to his position out here? So here's what I can share with you with regard to the Citicorp charts. And that is that they formed a, what did they form? Let me see here. That low is 38.26 and this close was 38.24 so i don't have a bottom pattern i've got a roads momentum indicator signal um it needed a bullish reversal candle it's failed to produce that or it first failed it and then we got a um, and that pattern was negated here on the trading day of october 27. nonetheless price above that red offset or change line we're trading above yesterday's high that suggests a further move higher your resistance out here because i know you're asking should you add it you're in a losing position at this stage of the game um, I'm going to let you answer that question. Where a counter trend move would take us to is 4084 to 4126. They're 3981 right now. Average to range on this is about 85 cents per day. If I take a look at the weekly chart, that's the one that right now has got the most promise for you. In that, if we do get a bullish reversal candle on Friday, we've got one as of Wednesday at 1121 in the morning, that would generate a road momentum indicator bottom out there. But you still need to see price close above that oscillator and change line. So 4011, if you get a close above 4011 at week's end, boy, that would be nice and bullish there. It suggests that we move higher. 4086 would be its resistance a level out there. And we got 4084 on that daily bottom of its profile. Now, on a monthly time frame, although we don't see a bottom, what we can see that took place last month was price got back to that 3831 level. That was a TD9 count breakout area. That's where we saw the last significant bottom, which was April of 2020 inside of Citibank. So price got back there last month. Now, in order for this to suggest to you and I that that's a bottom that that's worthy of really being a bottom call, you've got to get price back above that red oscillator and change line. That's in the 4208 area out there. So on a daily basis, we don't have that confirmed bottom on the daily time frame, but weekly so far looks good. We are in day number three of a rally out here. And as we take a look at uh, Citibank out here, it sure has some four and five and six uh, days of consecutive rallies, but two and three, they're the predominant cycle out here. So this is suggesting that you could or should see a short-term top form uh, tomorrow out there. But uh, weekly, again, it looks pretty good. So I hope that that helps you out, uh, Alton, with regard to your question with regard to City Bank and uh, so much uh, and, and, uh, and appreciate the, uh, the request. Let's go to the next request out here coming in from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wants to take a look at BTAI, Bachman Turner Overdrive out there. And as we take a look at BTAI, what we're taking a look at is uh, what? Price closed above two on its daily basis, two TD9 count breakdown levels out there. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, what do you have? Uh I don't have anything to suggest a daily top. I'm not going to say that this is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside because that retracement was just too long. So perhaps maybe this goes on to form a TD9 count top. You're only in bar number six today, so we got to come back to that really at week's end and early next week. We love the weekly chart. Why do we love the weekly chart? Because right now, price is above its bearish structured weekly profile. And if we can get a close uh, this week above $3.90, this says it wants higher price. Now, higher price here over time, $9.77. Seven. That's a CD9 count breakdown level. It's 785, by the way, on the daily time frame. On the monthly, what we have is a wave seven potential bottom out there. It just means that we need to see a higher low this month. We're off to a good start there. If we get that, that's suggesting a rally to 932. So on the daily, it looks beautiful. On the weekly, it looks beautiful. And even on the monthly, it looks pretty darn good. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart out there, it just says be cautious right now. Expect a short term pull back if we can get it close below 431 too close below 431 then we could see a move back to the 369 386 or 402 level but bachman turner overdrive which is really by Exel therapeutics uh is looking pretty good dan so i hope that that helps you out let's take a look at your next request out here that's a take a look at arwr arwr trading out at about 25.99 it's trading above the top of its daily profile that's a beautiful thing there. That suggests that we have a change in trend. That's after Rose momentum indicator bottom. Where's its next target? I would say 3073 is its next target, trading out right now at 2594. On a weekly basis, price pulled back to its TD9 count, Rose momentum indicator bottom. The uh, uh, volume down there on the swing is about 5.2 million shares. So far for the week, you're at 3 million shares. So you got 
a lot more volume. But if price can close above this red oscillator and change line, that's what it's taking on right now. That's up at 26.12. A close above that will go a long way to saying, okay, just maybe you really have something here. You'll really have something here if price can close above 28.06. That's the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. So ARWR, that is for Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. This looks good as well. If I look at a quick 30-minute time frame chart out here, I don't see any kind of a uh, topping signal. I just see a negated TD9 count top out there. So it does look like, well, the, the resistance level on a 30-minute basis, Dan, is up at 26, is that 26? 26.46, and 26.46 is pretty much where it ran into resistance. So you want to see it close above that level uh, to suggest that this current uh, intraday rally is going to go ahead and continue. So hope that helps you out. One last request from Dan. That was to take a look at ticker symbol AQST. And we take a look at AQST out here. We've got price back inside its profile. The resistance level is 167. The close above 167 would take us up to the 182 area. The other resistance showing up on the weekly time frame. That's been a significant resistance level, Dan. That's been the oscillator and change line. But a close above 163 this week would be a very bullish outcome. Now that bullish outcome would run into a battle at 177 and 186 out there. There's not much on the monthly to help us out, but we do like AQST. Looks like uh, just got to deal with some uh, battleground areas. Again, we've covered those for you. So Dan, I hope that helps you out. We get back to this break. We'll take a look at ARKK for Rose and FNV for Hector. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratios, and the Trend Panic Levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, right now we've got the uh, Dow up 123, S&P's up 20, NASDAQ 99, Russell's down four points. We're going to go take a look at uh, ARKK. This is for rows inside the Tiger's Den. We take a look at ARKK out here. Uh, it is trading above its oscillator and change line, which is, a, which is a, uh, a bullish outcome. It has a new bullish structure profile that formed yesterday. So, Rose, what you'd like to see today is a close above the center of that level. That's at 3502. If you get a close above that, we're likely going to go up to 3712, $37.12 out there. That would be the next resistance level. On a weekly time frame, I do not have a bottom pattern. We've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Let's see how far along we are on that C to D leg. We'll just simply draw on the A to B. Looks like we've got further to go. And we'll see if that was even confirmed with volume. But first, let's go ahead and move that line down. Yeah, um, so it does have a little bit further to run, about 3305. That beep doesn't matter whether the beep point was taken out with volume at this stage because we're already down far enough out there. So no bottoming signal on the weekly as we speak just yet. A bullish reversal candle would accomplish that task. On a monthly time frame, just a sideways consolidation inside of AA Car a a ARKK since May of 2022 out there. So it doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of action Jackson here. But with regard to the daily time frame, uh, again, it looks like price wants to go target that 3712 level. Um, anything else that I can provide to Rose on that one? Let's see here on a 30 minute time frame for AR ARKK. Yeah, I don't have anything here. I don't have anything good or bad necessarily. I just don't have anything really to share with you on a 30 minute chart. So I hope that provided you with the information we're looking for out there, Rose, and uh, best of luck to you. Nicholas wants to know, Steve, uh, what will be the market reaction to the Fed announcement today? Now, that's a great question, and I don't know the answer to that. But, you know, what the market is um, indicating to us, at least at this stage of the game at 1130, is we've got those bottoms, we've got seasonality that suggests that we rally into at least Friday. You know, maybe Monday, maybe early part of next week out there. Uh, but we do have this event calendar out here that I can take a look at for the S&P 500. Uh, this is 10 years worth of data, and this is the Fed rate change. So in the Fed rate change, typically we see the market move down for four days after that. Now, that's over a 10-year period of time out here. We, we can increase that, I believe. We can go to 25 years. And on a 25-year basis, things are kind of flat for that uh, very next day, and then things move lower for about four to five. You don't see the chart? Ah, oh, shoot. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, here in the Tiger's Den, as I heard the uh, bell. So let's get back here. So this is the S&P 500 time frame. Well, maybe that wasn't it. Ah, okay. I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, so if we take a look at, here's the seasonality chart for uh, Fed rate changes out here. And you can see right now this line, this is over a 25-year period of time, represents where we're at today. Looks like things are relatively flat with regard to how the market responds, but then it starts to move lower. That's over a 25-year period of time out there. But with regard to the chart patterns and everything that is out there, you know, Nicholas, I'm not sure that that's really what I would rely upon out there. So right now, conditions, well, you know, the issue that we have here, if the market is jittery whatsoever, remember that market breadth, that TAS market breadth is negative for its daily and its weekly and its 240-minute time frame. So you can see a big swoop, if you well to the downside the question will be would um would uh, would uh, would support hold out there so let's go out to our first caller it is john in philly john thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you today i'm doing very well thank uh, uh excuse me i'm doing very well thanks for asking uh Welcome. steve i'm calling in to ask you to please help me with your data on the coffee futures charts that's uh, kcz3 um, Steve, I am flat. Uh, I've been trading this from the long side. Uh, I, uh, I would say I got lucky yesterday when um, I uh, sold out of a long position, and uh, it's abruptly pulled back. Uh, Steve, I'm wondering if your daily or weekly charts give us any clues as to whether this pullback bottoms out and gives way to higher price, and if so, what those uh, what those price clues are, please. Okay, so John, what I'm going to have to do for you, I'm gonna, first I'll try to answer that question as best as I can, but I'll be better to answer that question after the show. Um, and the reason is, is because I, I need to turn off one of my data feeds out there uh, in order to be able to pull up the uh, weekly and some of the intraday time periods, but I will post that into the den 
uh, for you. But we still have data that we can use, and I do have my black background chart up, so that doesn't uh, that's the actual data feed that I need to be exclusively on my white background chart as I take a look at coffee. But you are, uh, I like the idea that you actually sold yesterday out here, and the reason is because the rally stopped right at resistance. That was the top of its daily profile, and that was at 167.36 out there. The actual close yesterday was 167.30. Now, I had drawn in that if price would have followed through today, could have set up or still can set up an A to B equals C to the upside, it just needs a close of 169.05. But instead of getting that follow through, we're getting follow through to the downside. And again, price is below the bottom of its daily profile. Now, uh, we need two consecutive closes below the bottom of that profile. The bottom of that profile is at 160.57. If we were to, if it closes below that today, trades below that tomorrow, well, then um, where are we headed to? Um, and that's a good question. Let me see if I turn on my weekly set of profiles here, see if there's enough data for me to do that. If you give me just a moment, oh, I don't, okay, I've got to do it a different way. So now I've got a, uh, I don't have that indicator on this chart, but I'm going to insert that study here momentarily. If you give me just a moment, John, and we'll see if we can turn on those TAS profiles. Where did Stevie put that? Oh my goodness gracious. What the heck? Um, okay. Let me try, you know let me, You've got yeah. lots of uh, people, I'm sure, calling in and asking questions about stocks. So why don't I sign off? let you attend to those and you're always so good at doing, doing some follow-up work and press uh, and posting in uh tfnn's tiger's den after the show so i'd be much obliged for that and uh thanks for taking the call you bet you bet john and i'll absolutely do that that was john in philly and again uh, we'll go ahead and post those charts out there for uh, for everybody inside the tiger's den with regard to coffee futures so uh let's go on to my uh, next request out here and that was from uh, hector hector and patty they want to take a look at franco nevada and the question with regard to franco nevada is uh, when can we expect support and you can expect support today how do you come up with that, Steve-O? That's a great question. I'm going to answer that question. Well, today is going to be the day following bar number nine of a TD9 count. So if this is going to form a TD9 count bottom pattern, and there's no reason for us to believe that it won't, why is there no reason for us to believe that it won't? Well, if we take a look at the last high, that took place out here on October 18th. That was a TD9 count top. If we take a look at the last low below that, that was on the bar following bar. Oh, just seen the home screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, Lordy. Sorry about that, folks. It must be the sugar rush from last night. Just kidding. Uh, only had one little piece of candy out there. But uh, here, so you've got the TD9 count, bar following bar number nine. That's what's forming today. Took a look. Take a look at the last tie. was on bar number nine. Take a look at the last uh, low. It was on the bar following bar number nine. That formed a nice rally. So where should we expect support today? With regard to Franco, Nevada, we should expect it to be at whatever the low is today. If price closes below the low of today out here tomorrow, well, that's going to tell us that price is going to move back to 115.66, and that's where we'd find support. That is the bottom of its monthly profile. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. I took that uh, break uh, just to simply go ahead and uh, in insert that uh, multi time frame uh, tool that I've got uh, up here so I can take a look at the uh, weekly profiles here for coffee. So, John, when I put the uh, weekly time frame chart up on my screen, it still shows a daily profile. But what we can see here is that uh, we only had one week with a close above the top of that uh, profile. We're back inside there. The reason why I'm making that one week a big uh, deal is because typically if we have two weeks above resistance, then a counter trend move to the downside would typically find support at the center of that profile. In the center of that profile, I'm gonna give that to you anyways, because that, it still could act as an area of support, but that'd be at 157.35. But what I would share with you there is your price closed below 157.35, price should make a run for the bottom of that profile. I'm not saying that's where it's going to end up with the support, but it should make a run towards that level at 149.23. So the levels to be watching inside of a coffee are going to be 157.35, and price closes below that on a weekly basis, 149.23 out there. So I hope that that helps out with regard to the December coffee futures contract. I'll still post those white background charts uh, into the uh, den uh, after the uh, show once I can get my uh, computer system set up for that. In the meantime, let's go take a look at Marvell. This is for Duncan Steve inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, Marvell right now um, has a TD nine count bottom. And the issue here, that TD nine count bottom, Steve, that fo that formed on October the 26th out there. And that level has been tested several times, but it is held. The low is held. The issue here with Marvell and what this needs in order for that TD nine count bottom to get traction is a close above that red oscillator and change on. At least that's the first battle, and that's at 47.62. If that can be accomplished, the second battle would be at 48.50. If you can close above 48.50 for two consecutive days, then you're off to the races. And those races would take you to 54.72. On a weekly time frame chart, looks to me like an A to B equals CD to the downside. The swing point out here had volume of 99 million shares. One it was passed, it was passed with 46 million shares and then 42 million shares. So it is a light volume, A to B equals CD to downside. Doesn't mean that it won't go ahead and complete it out here. But we won't come back to that until we see a failed TD9 count bottom pattern on the daily time frame. If price does continue to head lower, we get that failure, then we'd be looking for support in between 3907 and where it's trading right now at the 4674-ish area out there. So when we take a look at Marvell, 
Staley's got a nice bottom, but really price has got to close about 48.50 to tell you've got upside traction. And that's because we've got a weekly A to B equal C to the downside. We're nowhere near where that's going to complete. And you've got further support on a monthly chart down around the 39.07 area out here on a 10 minute chart. I happen to have a 10 minute chart out. So from a 10 minute chart, what do we have? We've got a TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top and roads meant to indicator top. It's TD9 count top. That's one that we're paying attention to. You've got a little bit of a consolidation with inside its uh, profile from a 10 minute standpoint. 170.91 to support 171.95 as resistance out there. Price were to close below 170.91. Price should move to 170.12 out there. So that's what I see. What's oh, Apple? Oh, that was an Apple 10 minute. What the Sam heck? How'd that get? Okay, we're getting rid of that so it doesn't show up again. I don't make that silly mistake out there. Let me come back. So forget of everything I just said there. Uh, instead, let's take a look at a 30 minute chart out here. 30 minute chart, boy, roads meant to indicator bottom. And guess what, Duncan? Uh, price just keeps hitting resistance at the top of the profile. I do not like how Marvell is looking out there. MRVL is the uh, ticker symbol. So I hope that that uh, review assisted you. We've got a request from Sat P inside the Tiger's Den. Would like to uh, take a position, add some shares to ticker symbol MDB. So we take a look at MDB. Let me make sure. Yeah, I'm in the right spot. That's a good thing there. We take a look at MDB. Do we see any kind of a bottom? We see a roads momentum indicator bottom that was confirmed yesterday. However, price ran into resistance at the bottom of its daily profile. Today, you're back below that red oscillator and change line. Set. If price closes below 339.01, it tells us it wants to go target that swing point from October 26. Now, it hasn't hit that level. That level, the top of that level, would be 334.39. Volume is 1.4 million shares out there. Today, you've done 333. It's two hours of trading. That says you could do about 1.2 or so. So you're coming to that swing point with light volume. If price can test, that means gets down and at least touches, let's say, 334.38, closes back above 334.39, you could have a test rejection. That You would have a test rejection at swing point on lighter volume. But you still would be, you know, you'd really like to see it close back above that red oscillator and change line out there. So the daily's got potential, but right now it's saying it hasn't proven itself to us. On a weekly basis out here, I don't have anything that shows us a bottom. And on a monthly basis, it's starting to really lose its momentum. And it'll lose its momentum on a monthly close below its green oscillator and change line. But we just started that today. So no reason for us to really spend too much time on that. On a 30-minute time frame, as we take a look at MDB out here, we don't have anything to suggest that uh, this is not going to head lower. Price right now is trading below the bottom of that 30-minute uh, profile. So with regard to you've got the daily numbers to be paying attention to. You know what to look for there. If you get that test of rejection, you could certainly put on a few shares and close it if you get a close below the low from October 26 out there. You also wanted to take a look at uh, ticker symbol HUBS. Uh, Really the same type of thing out here. I don't see a bottom pattern. Well, let me see. Maybe there's an A to B equal C. Maybe there's a buy the D point. I take that back. Yesterday was a buy the D point pattern inside of HUBS out there. So what do we have? We've got price testing that red oscillator and change line. That is currently printing at 417.61. We're at 416.54. Actually, this I've got a little bit of a delay here. Um, I'm going to say hold on on that one, too. If we close, you know, and so we're trading into a swing point from October 26, volume here, 983, 129. You're pulling it with lighter volume, but if it closes that swing point, it might be just a test of that swing point low at the uh, 407.23. And the only reason why I would say entertain that is because on the weekly basis, what hubs uh, HubSpot did was it pulled back to its breakout area, it did that last week at 408.58, and that has held out there. So there is some potential support that can be a bottom, but I don't have the – we've got the bottom signal yesterday on the daily time frame out here, but we don't like how this is trading as we speak right now. So it uh, might not be the information you were looking for, but it is the information that I have available to us. So let's go on to our next request. It's the last request I think that I've got in the system right now, and that's to take a look at ticker symbol WRAP. And this is for Lee B. And Lee wants to, uh, Lee, I don't recall what it was you were looking for out here, but what we can say is this thing's been a rocket ship over the last three days out there. Now, as I take a look at the monthly chart, I'm going to start from the monthly chart out here. And on the monthly chart, we see that price is above 
They closed above the top of its profile. That suggests there's a uh, breakout or a change in trend, even though I don't have a real bottom signal on a monthly basis. But that itself can be a, mo a bottom signal. On a weekly basis, if, in fact, RAP technology closes above dollar – 90, that's its TD Nike out breakdown level, and it's trading above it right now. That'll say suggest to you and I that we've got higher price. Now, there's an A to B equals CDT upside. This has gone ahead and it's made more than the one to one out there. I'm pretty sure that it has. Let's go take a look at that. Let's move that. Try to move that about right there. And so now we can see, yes, yeah, more than a one to one. So what you have to watch for on the weekly base would be a bearish reversal candle. That would confirm a Gartley sell pattern. We don't have that right now. And this suggests that we should continue to head higher. The daily pattern out here also has an A to B equals CD. So if you were to get a bearish reversal candle, then we would see a pull back to about buck, a buck 80. We don't have that as we speak right now, but we could by day Zen. That was WRAP. That was for Lee B. We'll be right back. Tigers. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratios, and the Trend Panic Levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So what you've got on your screen right now is the 30-minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. I just want to see if this has completed the A to B equals CD pattern out there, and it most certainly has. So you've got a uh, short-term top signal on the 30-minute uh, ES Mini. Uh, it uh, formed that as we came to the 11.30 time frame when it generated that little bearish engulfing candle. Now, price remains above its green oscillator and change line, but there is a new profile that is formed. Resistance is up at 42.48.50. 
Price close above that will negate this uh, sell the D point pattern. And support is at 42.24 on a pullback, then 42.19, and then finally be down at 42.08.43 out there. So those are the levels to be watching inside the ES Mini for its 30 minute time frame. Again, a close about 42.48.50, and the rally should continue itself. Um, we're at 12, uh, almost noon out here. Uh, Powell comes out at uh, 2 p.m. with regard to their uh, rate decision out here. So probably the market somewhat stalls around now or maybe pulls back, or at least that's the message from at least the ES Mini. That's the same message when we take a look at the uh, Dow Equity Future contract. Here, its first level of support will be 33.185. On a pullback, and then it's down at 33.052, 33.02 on the uh, on the uh, uh, if a price were to get below that. In the case of the NQ, we've got a wave number seven top out here. It also is forming a new profile. So support here, you've got resistance at 14 649.50. Uh, you get above the high of the uh, day out there that came in 11 o'clock and negates that wave number seven pattern. And you've got support down at 14 482. So you got 14 549 as we speak right now, 14 482. I would say, based upon these intraday topping patterns here, the 30 minute chart, we're likely to see the market just simply trade sideways, not break out from here. But trade sideways out there is it away as it awaits the uh, Powell decision out there. Which way will the markets break? You know, I can make the case. The bearish case is Taz Market Breath is saying just be careful because if the markets get nervous, they'll head to the downside. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on a terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care now.